So finally, some good news in the Micah Miller case. I know there's been some back and forth on if the FBI is investigating Micah's passing or not, and People Magazine seem to have confirmed that they are. So hopefully this leads somewhere in the quest for justice for Micah. So I'm Joseph Morris, and I'm joined here by my co-host, Gabby. So if you want to hang out with me and Gabby, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. So it says here, the FBI is now conducting a parallel investigation following the unaliving of Micah Miller. The South Carolina pastor's wife found on April 27th in Robson County, North Carolina, the sheriff's office tells People. Miller, 30, was found at the Lumber River State Park from what authorities determined was self-induced. On Wednesday, Damian McLean with the Robson County Sheriff's Office told People that the FBI's field office in Columbia, South Carolina, is conducting a parallel investigation in connection with the case, but is not investigating Micah's passing. McLean declined to provide further information on the nature of the investigation. So Pastor John Paul Miller, Micah's estranged husband, was not in North Carolina at the time of her passing. McLean reiterated to people that the sheriff's office believes John Paul was not involved. Quote, there's no evidence connecting him to her passing. End quote, McLean told people. Quote, the FBI is investigating separate from her passing. Her passing has been ruled a self-induced. Kevin Wheeler, a spokesperson for the FBI's field office in Columbia, South Carolina, told people the office is communicating with Robson County authorities, but declined to comment on whether there is an investigation. Wheeler added, quote, The truth is... The Robinson County Sheriff Department put out a statement saying that the FBI was investigating and all that I can tell you is that we have communicated with them. Beyond that, I can't give you any details. End quote. A statement to people from the FBI's National Office of Public Affairs reads, quote, We have no comment and can neither confirm nor deny an investigation because of long-standing Department of Justice policy. End quote. McLean, however, said the FBI is an investigation that's going along with our investigation, though he added that the Bureau is not investigating her passing. Quote, it's not connected to, it's not the same investigation, end quote, McLean added. So the ruling of Micah's passing as self-induced did little to quell speculation from her loved ones that there was foul play involved. But Robson County authorities have repeatedly asked those following the case to refrain from speculating about the high-profile case. Quote, unfortunately, rumors and conspiracy theories were spreading quickly and assumptions were being made. However, in the end, we must make decisions based on the fact and evidence that has been gathered. End quote. So it looks as though that the FBI is running some sort of investigation next to Micah's that has to do with the case, but has nothing to do with her passing, if that makes any sense. So I think maybe they're confirming that investigation into Solid Rock Church, if I'm not mistaken, where there was a charity in Africa and JP was said to be skimming some money off of the top of the donations. Maybe that has something to do with it. And potentially that could show a motive for trying to unalive his estranged wife. Meanwhile, Micah's family has said that they believe the scene where they found her body was quote unquote staged. The theory of does not add up to me because you're telling me her body floated all the way down this stagnant water and From her belongings were all the way up here. We had to walk down a trail, a separate trail, climb through all this mud and trees and fall and debris to even get to where her body was down the water. It's not like she could have, you know, left her belongings mm -hmm. and walked down the water and then here and then somehow the bullets and everything stayed over there. So the bank where the... And yeah, so what I'm gathering from this video is that Micah looked like she herself about 40 meters away from where her body was found and it was impossible for her body to float to where it was discovered because there was no currents. Like from the video, you can see that it was way back around like what looks like a bend, like a corner. You would have to wade through the water. What kind of person would want to go through potentially crocodile infested water to get to this location? 
And she's also saying that there is a path that you can also go down, but to get through that path, you had to go through mud and all these fallen trees. It just really doesn't make sense. It's almost like her body was washed. And for somebody who did the 911 call of wanting to be discovered, she actually dialed 911 saying, hey, can you find me? It doesn't make sense for her to hide in this back corner of the river. Bird boxes and stuff are, is where the shell casings and such were found. And the gun was found forward of that, right in the, at the, the water. And then her body was about 40 meters away and the water doesn't flow you know, at all. There's no, there's no way she would have floated 40 meters away uh, from the, the edge. It is as if she was placed there. In surveillance footage we obtained through the Freedom of Information Act, you can see her leaving home, buying a gun, and stopping at this remote gas station. I went there and spoke with the owner. He saw Micah Miller that day. Did she look like she was waiting for somebody here? Yeah, and I just want to add that Michael also said that she had bruises on her hand as if it looked like her hand was being forced to her head to do whatever the deed was. Also that there was more scratches on her other arm as if it was being held behind her. No. Not at all. She got the drink, came outside, used the restroom. Uh, the party fought her, got her gas, and... Uh, she was left. Just an ordinary day. <laughs> nothing, nothing suspicious, nothing, you know, like just regular, regular day, regular thing. She texted me again at 347 and said, are you singing this Sunday? I'll be at second service. And I said, yes. Micah's friend Angela Clark was among the last to speak with her the night before she died, making plans for Sunday, offering to help with car payments. She said, okay, I'm excited to see you up there. Despite all the surveillance, she is not buying the official ruling. This is not somebody that's ready to end their life. This is somebody that's making plans for the weekend, right. you know, and getting her car payment made. Why do you worry about getting your car payment made? For that matter, why do you pay a lawyer $5,000 and file for divorce and have someone served? There's so many unanswered questions. I. Like I said, I can't wrap, I can't wrap my brain around it. I, it none of it, make, there's so much that just doesn't make sense. Her family agrees, it does not add up. So you, you do not believe she took her own life? I do not. I believe that it was all staged. I believe that the whole thing was premeditated. Yeah, and just a coincidence that he was out of town at a school soccer match during the time that she did this to herself but the school soccer match got out at 11.30 a.m. She made the phone call at around 3 p.m., so he had time to drive back. Anyway, guys, what do you think of this new development? What do you make of it? Sound off in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe by hitting my face right here so you can hang out with me and Gabby again. Bye, guys.